Hey there, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to change the color of these little eyeshadows. So here's a photo that I took with my Canon, and I've kind of touched it up, did a little color correction, and made the powder just a little bit sharper. So let's go ahead and just create a duplicate layer, just in case we screw up this original. So let's just take the eye off the original, and we're gonna work with this one. So I'm gonna delete everything except for the eyeshadows. So I'm just gonna quickly grab big chunks of the image that I don't want. I can also just zoom in and use the circle tool and just select inverse, get the eraser, make sure we have a good brush size and start erasing. Okay, so now that I have done most of that, let's just continue and delete the big chunks. And just to make sure that we got every little detail, let's create another layer and we're gonna fill this black. And then we're just gonna put it underneath that layer. And you can see some stuff that I've missed. So let's go to that eyeshadow layer and just delete. Okay, everything else seems good. So let's delete that black layer. And this is what we're left with. Let's name these layers original. This is just the eyeshadow layer. We'll do that like a number one. And let's copy that just a few times. So that we can uh, play around with different colors. Let's go to eyeshadow number two, and let's make that black and white. So fastest way to do that is you can hit Command Shift U or Control Shift U, and that'll just turn it black and white. So we can just name this black and white or BW. A great resource that you can go to to get color schemes is at Adobe. So it's color.adobe.com. So if we just go into the search bar and type in makeup, we can get a whole variety of different color schemes. So let's just scroll down and just see whatever catches your eye. I'm gonna pick something that's just really bright so that you can see the effect. So let's choose this one, butterfly makeup. Let's copy and paste this into the eyeshadow file. And let's just move this over to the top. We're just using it as a reference for the hex colors. So I'm gonna go into the black and white layer, which is right here, and zoom in. Actually, first, let's just grab this orange. So use the eyedropper tool, grab the orange, and then we're gonna color with that. Okay, so let's grab our brush tool. And the default setting usually is normal, but we're gonna go to the color mode and you can play around with the different opacity. So let's try this at 50% to start. And then you wanna go into your brush settings and under shape dynamics, make sure that the size jitter and the minimum diameter is 100% and your smoothing is on. And last thing is to go back to the layer that you wanna color, which is that black and white layer. And then grab your brush. And something I also wanna mention is make sure you choose the hard brush because that way you could do the edges without having a blurred effect as in one of these other brushes. Okay, so we're about to start coloring. Okay, so the trick to this is do not let go of the mouse. If you let go of the mouse and you go back and you start coloring again, it's gonna have a different level of opacity. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So now I've let go of the mouse and I forgot something, blah, blah, blah. I come back and I start coloring again you're gonna get this happening. It's not gonna look very smooth. So make sure you do not let go of your mouse. So let's just undo all that and you wanna do it in one stroke. Let's say that this color is a bit too dull for you. You can change the opacity, but you have to undo everything and redo it again. So let's 
step that up a notch and let's make it at 75. And another key to making it really smooth is if you hold your breath because the slightest movement can shift your fingers on your mouse. I'm using a tablet right now and this really takes practice. And you may think this is tedious, but at the end, you're really going to enjoy the final output, especially when you're creating your own images. OK, so there is the orange done. Let's just zoom out and see how that looks. And now we can just go ahead and do the next color. So let's zoom in. And we want to make it consistent, so let's just keep it at 75% opacity. OK, moving on to the next one. Let's grab the blue. Another trick you can do is just use the elliptical marquee tool and uh, just highlight that. And then you can just paint inside the lines. OK, let's grab this one is probably not going to make a difference. So we'll just leave that one and we're going to grab the last one here. All right, so we're done, and this is how it looks. Now, if you remember from before, I had also created a layer with just the color and not the black and white. So the reason I used the black and white version to make the new colors was because it was all the same tone. If I start building on all these different colors, it's going to have a different level of intensity. So we can certainly try putting these colors onto the already existing colors. So let's start again with this orange. And I'm going to put the orange on top of this purple. So let's just see what happens. And I'm just going to quickly do it. I'm not going to do it too perfect. The color is a little more intense. So here is the orange on top of the purple. And we're going to look at the one with the black and white, which is right here. So if I toggle back and forth, you can see the different levels of intensity. So if you kind of want a uniform palette, I would suggest working off of the black and white version instead of these other colors here that are already existing. Now I'm going to show you another way you can change the color. It's a more easier way, but there are downsides to this method. And the only reason is because you can't individually change them. You can only change them on a mass scale. So here is the original colors we were working with. So all you have to do is go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. And then all you got to do is just play around with these settings. Now keep in mind, it's just going to change everything as a whole and not individually. The only way you can do that is if you isolate each color on a different layer and then change the hue from there. Another way you could also change the color is go to Image, Adjustments, and Color Balance. And same thing here, play around with the different color settings. Now, if you do it through these other two methods, you don't truly get that exact color match that you want. It's basically just a generalization. So if you want to truly match your brand color, I suggest using the brush tool and the hex color method. So the last thing you can do is just put some text here. You can put, uh, I don't know, summer fun in the sun. And we can just pick a cool font, something like that. Make this bigger. And then you can have a tagline, you can have your logo or whatever, you can change the colors up. So that's all there really is to it. You can purchase this stock image on my website at thisdesigngirl.com. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial and happy designing. Feel free to visit my website at thisdesigngirl.com for more free tutorials.